having standards. We have to be able to fully qualify buyers and sellers because again, now we're not going to be able to take an overpriced listing. Hopefully you guys weren't, weren't doing that before. And I've always said, do not take overpriced listings if they can't sell. But at one point it felt that, you know, some homes were overpriced and they were still selling. And this was during the time where, you know, we would see the super low interest rates, the really low inventory. But now sellers are going to have to be very realistic when it comes to the price that they're setting on the home in order to make sure that it actually sells. So having conversations with sellers, making sure that they're motivated, they're serious, and they're realistic on what market value is. You don't want to just get a listing to put the sign in the yard if you know it's not going to sell. Doing a CMA, running comparables, having these conversations with sellers to make sure that they're that they are actually serious and motivated and realistic on the price are going to be things that you're going to have to talk about. Um, you know, it, it's crazy that there are still some sellers out there and maybe you have seen it. Some sellers are still delusional thinking that, you know, my house is worth a million, but you know, everything has changed. Maybe they could have gotten a million last year and now it's, I don't know, 850 or something. So at that point, it's making sure that you know what a seller's motivation is. If a seller is not motivated, they're just going to sit there. They might tell you, you know what, I'm, I'm waiting for that specific buyer to come on by or I'm not in a rush. Those are usually things that sellers say that kind of raise a red flag for me. If someone says, you know, I'm not in a rush or I'm not serious, then I think, okay, well, then what's the reason for you to sell? I want to make sure that there's an actual reason for someone wanting to move. Otherwise, they might be the ones that feel that I have to run the show, if that makes sense. And at the end of the day, just know that you are the real estate professional. You will have to be the one giving them market information and letting them know exactly what's going on. So something that I tell the sellers is, you know what, at the end of the day, it's what the market is saying. I would love to price your home for X amount. However, I would be doing a disservice to you by doing that because I know it's not going to sell. It's going to sit. We're not going to get any activity. What's going to end up happening is that people are going to be coming in through the house and looking at it here and there, or we might just not get any activity. And also, you should be able to get to a point that, you know, there's going to be times that you're going to have to adjust. Let's say you think that you're pricing a home at market value, but the market is just not responding the, the way that you thought. Now we have to revisit, you know, maybe the next week. In some cities in the U.S., you know, the market's changing so fast that from one week to the next, like, you know, you have to revisit and see exactly what's going on with the market and how much properties are selling for. So having these conversations with sellers, setting those standards for yourself and the type of clients that you're willing to work with is really important. Maybe you haven't sold any homes in the last couple of months, or maybe you haven't had a lot of transactions, but ideally, what does that ideal client look like for you? Who do you want to help? Is it a specific neighborhood? Is it a specific price point? Is it you want to help like teachers and firefighters because you, you were, I don't know, a nurse at some point. Think about this because this will make it easier for you to see how exactly you should create kind of like your marketing and who you should be reaching out to. Some of these things that I'm mentioning are things that sometimes we don't even think about. But again, I'm doing this training because I want to start having you think of of things and people and clients that you ideally want to target because it's going to be easier for you to want to prospect. Whether it's making phone calls or, you know, door knocking, you want to make sure that you, you know, kind of who you want to target. 